Hey guys, Ray from LoveyRV.com. So, I've recently met up with some friends of mine in Quartzsite from Wyoming. A fellow named Eddie and his wife Eileen. He does mobile solar installs uh, out of his rig. He actually built this fifth wheel rig himself. They call it their mobile homestead. Anyway, I thought uh, in today's video I'd do a walkthrough of his system because it's a pretty incredible system, really well installed. Um, he's got, I think, about 1,800 watts on the roof, and he's got a bunch of Trojan batteries in the in the bay that he built for it, and uh, quite a unique setup. So we'll go through that and uh, get him to tell us what he powers off all that energy. So let's first go up on the roof. He also pulls this thing with a big uh, semi truck. Okay, so here we are up on the roof with all the panels. You know that they all have tilt brackets and they're tilted towards the south sun coming in. So you can see he's put on a, what kind of metal is this, stainless? No, this stainless. is aluminum, 16 aluminum, gauge aluminum. 16 gauge aluminum on the roof. And then each panel goes down on its own separate separate uh, fitting going underneath the roof yeah, there. Yeah, instead of being like a normal RV where I have to put all the wiring up on the top and tape it down or secure it down, all the wiring in this one goes into the roof and through, and that way I have less wiring and less problems up on the roof. Yeah, it sure makes it uh, clean. And these brackets, do you make them yourself? Yeah. Or do they, you buy them? Nope, make them myself. Those are uh, custom made brackets. Uh, tilt brackets made out of uh, 3 16 aluminum by 2 inch. Yep. And then the bar steel is just a uh, 1 inch by um, half inch or quarter inch, I'm sorry. And you just have the wing nuts so you can do them up and down quickly. Yep. Yep. Sure, it takes a little while to put this mini up and down. <laughs> yeah. But you guys with this rig, you guys stay in one spot a long time. Yep. Exactly. I noticed no air conditioning. <laughs> nope. No air conditioner up here. When all my panels are flat and um, all the vents are down. We're actually right at 12 foot 8 inches. Wow. But we still have a, a 9 foot 3 inch inside yep. wall. So it, that's the reason we had that. And we have a ductless mini split instead of an air conditioner on the roof. Nice. Ductless mini split has uh, less amp draw throughout the whole time it's being yeah. used. So it worked out better for us to go that way. And you don't run your air conditioning off your batteries. No, I could you, run it off. That's why you have the all the fans. If I needed to or wanted to, I could run it off of solar, but we, we're kind of like you. We chase 70 degrees as best yeah. we can. Yeah. Let's take a walk down here. Sure. That is a clean, clean install. <clears throat> My combiner box that I have instead of having to put it on the roof, yep. it's actually integrated in my ceiling. Yeah. So that way it's not something else to be kicking around or stumbling. Up yeah, sort of what I did on a little smaller scale. Yeah, yeah, you did exactly the same thing. And you got your satellite dish up here. Yep. So that gets all run off your solar and batteries. Yes, it does. That nice. right there is a treat because for years and years I had to do it manually and adjust it manually. Yeah. I didn't even have one of the auto domes like the tailgaters and stuff like that I had to do it you know just get up there. I remember I had a photo of you up on your roof yeah. here one time <laughs> yeah, I was resetting and everything so this was the big big fancy expenditure for me right there nice that's so cool so what kind of amperage are you pulling in when these things are all maxing out? I've had up to 80 amps total with the whole system going if I really need it. But a lot of times um, the, the batteries are topping off quick enough. I don't yeah. really have to have it. That's the reason, you know, in the middle of the day we could run all kinds of different stuff. Yeah. Um, electrical cooking items and, and uh, when I'm working on jobs and stuff like that I've got a separate inverter I can... Um, work off of that and um, run, you know, chop saws and yeah, drills and yeah. all that electrical stuff. So it, we've got plenty of power for extra power. We're we've got way more solar than we really need right this minute, but it's there if we do need it. And are these 
all parallel or are they series parallel? Or? They're, they're all parallel. I've had many people ask me why I didn't at least run into 24 volt series and I explained them it's simple. Don't need to. It's too short of a run from here to um, halfway to the front and then it goes down to my battery uh, to my solar charge controller so there's no need to, to put it in 24 volt plus it keeps it from having the shading and we run a 12 volt system. Well, there's a few people wanting to go to 24 volt systems. Um, we could have made this a 24 volt system, but um, in this application, it just it was smart just to stay with what it was. And this is our original uh, solar array that was yeah. on our other camper. So I kind of go along with uh, the kiss, um, <laughs> keep it simple statement. Yeah. I just took what we had and put it back here. And I don't like a higher voltage on DC until you get to the final use of it because you know if you run it up to you know 48 to 100 volts on DC and you get a, a wire that was to ground out you, you got a potential of starting to fire yeah yeah the it's, risk goes way up yes, as you up the voltage and there's not the benefit isn't really there for jacking it up real high like that okay well let's go down into the bowels and look at your uh, main battery area and where all the charge can solar charge controllers are and stuff like that okay so the batteries live in this front compartment that he built um, it's pretty stuffed right now with a lot of his uh, camping gear and all that so rather than make him bail it all out Eddie's all done a video of it prior to this so I'll cut it into this video for you and you'll you'll hear him explain all his wiring and controllers and switches and batteries for you but maybe we'll have him tell where he ran the wires from the ceiling coming down through. Well, it comes, it centralizes just right over that second panel in the center. Yep. It'll come down and then we have a combiner box in the actual ceiling. Yep. And then from there it comes down with, it's actually two independent systems, uh, the left and the right system. And they come down with their own uh, number four wires for both the plus and the minus. And they come in and go into the charge controllers. The charge controllers and um, uh, all my uh, switches and um, uh, inverters and everything are in a storage bay yeah. underneath. Yeah. And then the batteries are up under here in the outside compartment. Okay, cool. All right, guys. Here is our battery bank, or I should say battery banks. We actually have two um, 450 amp hour battery banks, which consist of these T105RE batteries, four in each one, gives us a total um, energy storage of 900 amp hours. Now ours are lead acid batteries. A lot of people have gone to lithium. Um, I've got a couple of reasons why I haven't gone. One, this is my original battery bank. It's a five-year-old battery bank and it's doing awesome. I've got no complaints. Um, keep the water levels up on my batteries and they do really well. And the other thing is, if you notice, this is an actual outside storage area. You can see the cracks in the door over there. Um, we keep our propane tanks. If you look right there, you can see one of, of our regulators. We run four 30-pound um, propane tanks in here, and it, it needs to be open. So this is a cold area when it's cold outside, and it's a hot area when it's hot outside. So these batteries need to be able to handle uh, being in cold weather and hot weather. Uh, we've been in some pretty hardy locations where you need to have that. Lithiums would not do real well here and I don't want to waste my inside space just to be able to put um, a different kind of battery in. Plus these batteries are doing great so there's no reason to replace them. And the other thing is you know the cost of lithiums is just outside of my my uh, ability to pay for right now so I'm, I'm sticking with my lead acid batteries doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with lithium it just means this makes sense for my application um, I also haul with a semi so I can handle the extra weight so it doesn't really kill me some of you guys you guys have to use lithiums for the weight factor because you're already overweight all right let's move on to the next area here is our electrical room uh, we have two inverters a pure sine wave magnum 2000 watt inverter right there and over here we have a modified sine wave 2000 watt inverter it was given to us by a client that didn't want it anymore and we put it in with the idea that 
we would replace it later on with a 2000 watt inverter. It's come in pretty handy though. I normally use it for uh, charging our batteries. It takes the load off the pure sine wave inverter. And also I've, I use it to uh, run tools and things on the outside so we can cut down the load on the 2000 watt Magnum pure sine wave inverter. We have two individual um, Morningstar TriStar 60 amp solar charge controllers. They're PWM, they're not MPPTs. All this equipment was originally in our other camper and we moved it into this one. Now each one runs off half the array. That uh, the left hand inverter handles the left hand array on our top of our roof and the right hand handles the right hand array. Each one of these are individually hooked to each side battery bank. This, this charger goes to the um, right hand side battery bank and that one to the left hand side battery bank. Both of the inverters can work off of either one or the other of the battery banks or they can work on both at the same time. Right now, everything's hooked up, so it's one big 900 amp hour battery bank. The whole reason I decided to do it this way was I wanted to be able to, if I needed to remove a battery bank to do maintenance, or if something was wrong with the battery, or if something was wrong with the charge controller, or something of that nature, I would never be 100% out of power. I'd be able to move switches around to be able to run um, either one of the, the inverters off of either one of the battery banks. Um, we do run the PWM Morningstar TriStar controllers. A lot of people like the MPPTs. I like them too, but uh, I had these and there's no reason to replace something if it's working. So uh, we kept these. If they die in the future, I possibly will go to an MPPT controller but I guarantee you it's going to be a Morningstar TriStar MPP2 controller. This is our inverter sub panels. This one right here is for our pure sine wave inverter. Most of the loads go to the pure sine wave inverter that go into the house. There's one outlet that goes outside and uh, so I can have pure, pure sine wave inverter to uh, charge up my uh, lithium batteries on uh, my drills and stuff of that nature. And this one over here is a modified sine wave inverter sub panel. I don't have as many outlets hooked to it, only a couple of wires going into it. But um, I have an outlet outside. I'm going to have a second one out there also here pretty soon so that I can take and run my saws and equipment of that nature. This is a Blue Sea style um, fuse panel that I got. I've got two of them in the system. I like these. These are used on boats quite a bit. And the wires are still loose. I've got to tie everything down. But uh, it's, it's real simple. It's not like the ones in your RV with a lot of loose stuff in there you got to be careful with. Um, this system has a grounding system built into it. All these are the grounds here. And then you add your, your um, loads on this. And each one you can put in whatever um, fuse system you want to put in here. I have two of them. I have one in the, in the rear and then one in the front. Or if it's boat, it'd be the the after the bow. So maybe we'll go in and uh, look at uh, the, his uh, meters for keeping tabs on on the state of the batteries and how much charge is coming in that sort of thing. Okay here's the master control center for NASA. <laughs> anyway Eddie will explain what these are doing. Start with the top two there. These top two are, are uh, monitors for both of our uh, solar charge controllers. Each one of these solar charge controllers are an array. Um, this is the uh, left-hand side array, and this is the right-hand side array. And it gives you all the wealth of information, how many amp hours, what amps you have coming down, the voltage, the temperature of the battery bank that it's going into, how many total amp hours you've put in. And then it goes down in here, which is your battery monitor for each one of the battery banks. Now they're all synced together as one, but if I have to, with just a couple of changes of switches, I can make it individual battery banks. So if I'm doing any kind of maintenance on either one of them, I can shut one down. Or if I've got a component wrong, uh, messed up or something, I can shut that one down and still limp with the other side of the, the array. Oh, that's nice. Redundancy. Yep, redundancy. Mm -hmm. Same thing here. We have two inverters. Now, normally we only have one in our other camper, and that was my only one I was going to install but um, that's my Pure Sign, um, Magnum Pure Sign 
2000 watt inverter. Mm -hmm. But this one down here is a Magnum modified 2000 watt inverter. And a lot of people ask me why I need that. Well, mainly we use it for just battery charging when we're plugged in or with the generator because that takes the load off your um, the battery charger that's built into the pure sign wave inverter. Oh, so they have their their battery chargers built in. Built in, exactly. Rather than separate charge converters. And I use this one for outside when I'm using um, uh, chop saws and uh, sawzalls and things that are plug-in power that really don't care what kind of power. They just want raw power. So uh, they were good on that. And it was a, it was a free, uh, perfectly good, uh, never been used inverter so so it works really that's well that's a nice them. idea because they're complex inverter chargers if one of them goes down it's not like you're out in a boonie's going to be fixing that anytime soon so it's really nice to have another one exactly with one wire change in the compartment down there i can switch everything from one inverter to the other inverter and this is showing your percentage of your your two battery banks yes it is oh, nice and we just compile the two together um when when we say this bank is 94%. That is a 50% of our total bank, and this one is at 93. Yeah. And the main main reason that this one's at 93, this one's closer to the main inverter, so mm -hmm. it's going to get a little bit quicker of a pull on it than the the bank on the left side. Yeah. Sweet. Eddie just pointed out his uh, attic door here that he can open, and he can get at his uh, solar combiner box where all the wiring comes down for the from the roof and is distributed. So I guess you guys will agree with me that's a pretty sweet system he's got set up there. Uh, what exactly do you run off of that system when you're out here? Well, we run all of our 12 volt systems like anybody else with an RV, but we also, um, we have a deep freeze that, uh, it's a five and a half cubic deep freeze that we run throughout the day until the end of the evening and then we turn our inverter off. Yeah. Um, uh, my wife has an Instapot. She runs uh, other electrical items. Um, first thing in the morning, even before the sun comes up, I run a, a Kurg coffee maker and make me a cup of coffee in the morning. <laughs> got to have coffee. Yeah, got to have that. Um, she, uh, uh, we've got uh, induction cooktops that, that she'll use uh, you know, quite often. And then I run all of my tools and stuff off of the system when I'm building up a solar system for somebody. You guys also have a lot of entertainment for your, your daughter and stuff like that. Yeah, we're kind of TV junkies, <laughs> uh, product of the 80s, I guess. But yeah, um, we have uh, three um, flat screen TVs. We run a, um, a uh, dish network system with, uh, with uh, the ho not the hopper, but the, uh, the Wally. And, and it takes up a little bit of power because it's a constant power unit. So yeah, we use yeah. quite a bit. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks a lot for showing us your system, Eddie. And uh, if you want to get a hold of Eddie, any questions on this system, or if you're looking for a solar install, he does mobile solar installs. So your mobile homestead solar services, right? Yep. And I'll leave links in the description for his email. And his, he's actually got a website. And he does have a YouTube channel, too. So we'll link to that if you want to see more videos on how he built his rig and some of his older installs. Just head over to his YouTube channel. There's a lot of uh, videos there. So next time, Ray from loveyourrv.com. Cheers, everyone. Thanks, Eddie. You bet.